Hi to Google Ads fans and welcome back. Discussing the different stages of the buyer's funnel, but more importantly now, drilling into specific buyer psyches and what those search terms that sort of are categorized by, by buyer psyche, where they, re, where they fall in the different stages of the buyer's funnel. Now I wanna point something out. The type of query or the buyer psyche doesn't necessarily re relate to any one of these specific buyer's funnels buyer's funnel stages every single time. It's not as if the question itself type of query is always gonna match up with the shop uh, stage of the buyer's funnel or informational queries will always match up with awareness stage, for example. That's not the case. You have to be able to assess everything on a query by query basis so you can understand where they fall in the stage of the buyer's funnel. And it's important to do that for a couple of reasons. One is that we're looking to create these thematically related keyword groups. Oh, that yellow is a little light to see, but you can see it. Thematically related keyword groups, that's the whole idea here. That's what we're trying to ultimately accomplish. Another reason is that we want to bid more aggressively on better keywords that are more in the uh, shop and interest stages of the funnel. And ultimately, the reason why we want to bid is because those keywords and those search terms are going to create, um, is going to generate traffic that has a higher conversion rate and usually a lower CPA, cost per acquisition, cost per conversion. And therefore, we want to have a good understanding of our search terms, sort of where they fall into the different stages of the funnel. So let's take a look at some of these examples that we have here. So office chairs with lumbar support. Where would you think this search query falls in on the stage of the buyer's funnel? And you can take a moment to sort of think about that. I would say it either falls into the interest stage of the funnel or perhaps even into the shop stage of the funnel where somebody is specifically looking for office chairs with a specific feature. Um, they're not they're most likely not looking for more information. It certainly sounds from the query that they're looking for a product or that they're looking for a service if it's a service-based, uh, if you're a service-based business. But this specific query, it looks like somebody's searching for a specific product. So they're either in the interest phase where they're like, you know, but probably closer into the shop phase because again, um, they are looking for that product. How can I fix my back problems from sitting all day? I would say that this is a pretty clear demarc demarcation of somebody who is in the interest phase. They're clearly, they're already aware of the problem, they, right? They're aware that they have a back problem and they're aware that the problem comes from sitting all day. And they're now sort of expressing that emotional interest in fixing that problem, right? So it's, you know, it's a keyword you wanna bid a little bit more on than if it was somebody just expressing something totally generic, but not as much as you would bid on a keyword for somebody who's looking to buy something. And that's gonna be reflected in, your, in the historic data in your account. Say somebody searches for my back hurts at work, all right? So this is something that I would sort of say is in that awareness phase, right? Very, very generic. We don't know if that person is looking to buy um, a chair. We don't know if that, looking, that person is looking to buy a better mattress. We don't know if that person is looking to go to a doctor. We don't know if that person's even looking for a solution, right? We don't, or, or we don't even know if he's willing to pay for a solution. Maybe he's looking for a blog post. Maybe he's looking for a free YouTube video, right? Maybe he's searching for information for our class project, right? Who knows, it's so general. At, at best, we could say it sort of fits into that awareness stage of the funnel, which doesn't mean that we don't wanna bid on it. It's just that we wanna be very conservative. If we have a limited budget, we don't wanna bid on it at all because we really wanna focus. We wanna make sure that we're getting as much of the shop and interest uh, keywords as we are. Um, but now I understand, I could say that the reason, you know, I could tell my client or I could at least have it, have, a, have an understanding that the reason why this is not a great search term, the reason why this is um, not a keyword we wanna bid aggressively on, the reason why this is gonna be grouped in a certain ad group is because if you look at the buyer's funnel, I could say now with, with a certain degree of professionalism and sophistication that this person is in the awareness stage of the funnel. My back hurts because I sit for too long in an uncomfortable desk chair. This is similar, um, but it's most likely awareness bordering on, bordering on interest, right? So he's the he or she is searching and saying that I sit in an uncomfortable desk chair. That's the problem, or that's that's the 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 cause of the problem that I have. Uh, and it, just by the very nature that he's performing a search like this, that's so expressive, is um, could be indication that he's in that interest phase. 
and it also makes it much more valuable for Poppin. Why does it make this much more valuable for Poppin than this previous search term, which was the description of the problem? Very, very simple reason is because he's using the word desk chair in his query, and he's expressing that he thinks that the, the potential solution to his problem is a better desk chair, or at least the cause of his problem is the current desk chair he has. Again, it's not a bottom of the funnel keyword because he's not, he's not looking to buy. He's not expressing commercial intent. He might be, you know, he might think that a better, a better desk chair is not going to solve his problem. This person might think that he just is sort of doomed to a life of, of bad back problems and chairs, but maybe he could solve it with a better mattress, or maybe he could solve it by going to a chiropractor or getting a massage or whatever it may be. Uh, so again, it's, it's, it's interest. It's interest in solving the problem. Maybe it's even awareness. Um, it's certainly not expressing an interest to shop right now, and it's certainly not going to be something that we're confident will lead to a conversion for us. Now we take a totally different type of search term, brand name, product names, Poppin Max Mid Back Task Chair. What do you guys think the buyer funnel for this keyword is? You should know this right away. This is a really easy one, right? Obviously, they're shopping, right? Obviously, the person has already expressed interest. He's already cognitively aware of the problem. He is now, and, and that stuff is not even important to us, right? What he exactly views the problem is, and that's another important thing to, to, to focus on. We don't necessarily know what problem this guy's trying to solve. We don't necessarily know, is this Jessica who, who is having back problems, or is this Jessica who's buying a new thing for her coworker, or is this um, Bradley, the entrepreneur, who just moved into uh, a, a WeWork space and wants a different chair. We have no idea, but it doesn't matter, right? Because we have something better. We have commercial intent. This is the beauty of Google Ads to begin with. We're able to capitalize on, on keywords that have an enormous amount of commercial intent. So we're gonna wanna bid aggressively, the most aggressively. When people search for brand names, product parts, we want to bid the most aggressively. Why? Because it has the highest chance of conversions. We have the most likelihood of getting a sale. But the other reason why we have to bid the most aggressively is, do you guys know, is because our competitors are also going to be bidding very aggressively. Again, Larry and Sergey up in, up in Mountain View are not arbitrarily creating prices of these auctions. It's all an open competitive landscape. So if we have to bid aggressively, that's because our competitors are bidding aggressively. And I wanted to point out over here, in this case, it's a little bit different because this is a branded search. And when it's a branded search for our specific brand, then we're gonna have a very low cost per click and an extremely high conversion rate. But you have a lot of brand name product parts that are not your specific brand. So let's say you sell televisions, right? So, so let's say Samsung, you know, uh, 4K, OLED, TV, right? So you sell them, but lots of other companies sell them too. So that's a brand name, that's a product part, that would definitely fall under this category. You're gonna have to bid very aggressively to get that spot on the page because your competitors that also sell the same product are also gonna be bidding aggressively because they're all capitalizing right here. They're all capitalizing on the intent to buy that the user is expressing that they're in that shop stage of the funnel. Informational queries, online desk chairs, websites that sell to office chairs, those are almost all typically somewhere between interest and shop, all right? And that's where, again, 80% of your account is going to lie. It's going to be figuring out online desk chairs, is, that's probably leaning more towards shop. Websites that sell office chairs, that might be leaning a little bit more to interest. They're looking for websites. They're looking to browse multiple different websites. Maybe they're still in that interest stage, um, really, developing the desire to buy. Maybe they're sort of in that shopping stage already that they're now actually comparison shopping, they've made that commitment. The thing to realize, it's very, very hard. It's almost impossible to really know. You're not gonna be able to predict with 100% accuracy exactly what stage of the buyer funnel a person is, is, a person is in based on what they searched Google for. It's just not gonna happen. You're gonna have to peg to the best of your ability what query represents what stage of the buyer's funnel. And it's not gonna be a perfect science, but you're gonna have a pretty good ability to understand, and you'll, you'll be pretty accurate. If you use these tools that we've been talking about, you'll know, is this person likely in the awareness stage, the interest stage, the desire slash, slash shop phase um, of the buyer funnel? And then, as a result, what can I predict my conversion rate to be? What can I predict my bid should be? How aggressive do I wanna be? What areas do I wanna focus on optimizing? And then you'll have um, a structure for your ad groups that could really, really be profitable, highly organized. And again, going back to what we spoke about um, 
a few lectures ago, I don't remember exactly which lecture it was in, but making the most of your time. You wanna focus your time on making sure that the keywords that represent people that are in that interest, desire, shop stage of the buyer's funnel are the ones that you're really tight on. You have the right ad copy, you're sending them to the right places of a site, you're making sure you have the highest possible impression share, and you, you spend the bulk of your time you have to optimize your campaigns focusing on those keywords and keywords that are, that are in the awareness stage, interest stage. You should have them bit conservatively and you should certainly focus on them, but they shouldn't be the, the primary um, target of your optimization efforts, so to speak. In the next lecture, we're gonna continue on with keyword planning for a little bit. We're gonna look at uh, Google Keyword Planner again to sort of see how we can get volume and cost estimates for certain keywords, how we could import campaigns back into AdWords using Google Keywords Planner. And then we'll also take a look at SCMrush, a really great software that could help us for our keyword planning stage. And then we'll be on to keyword organization. We'll go into Excel. We'll create our thematically related groups of keywords. And um, by the time we're done, you guys will be absolute experts in all things keywords in Google Ads, 1,000% in the top 1% of practitioners if you guys could really retain and understand all, all this information and more specifically communicate this information to your clients, um, to your boss, to your coworkers, to your friends, and it's really, really worthwhile. And I know that a lot of this might, might seem a little bit repetitive and it might seem a little bit uh, rudimentary, but in fact, having this foundation strong and clear will help you understand things in a, that will help you understand when things get more complex later on, when there's more complex uh, optimization techniques, more analysis, more data to look at, because you're gonna understand, oh, all of this data makes sense because I understand how my keywords are structured. And, it, and you'll see that all come together as you get a, more data in your account and as you go, and as you go into auditing accounts that have um, years, let's say, of historic data, having these fundamentals strong is, is really useful and it's really important. So I look forward to seeing you guys very soon in the very next lecture.